I wanted to show you what I decided to do this year um, for garden journaling. I originally had been using a notebook. Um, I did that for, I think, three years now, where just any sort of notes. Um, I had pictures of some of the seeds that I had planted that year. I was originally doing a calendar um, to keep track of what I planted when, what the highs and low temperatures were, things like that. I recently converted to a multi-year calendar because I figured I really wanted to see the course of years. So here I've got the year and then the date and then the you know temperatures, rain, things like that, whatever I had done put the zucchinis in, things like that. So I had done that for a couple years now. Um, farmer's market records, and then garden bed planning and things like that. But I was getting to the end of this book and I decided instead of starting another paper one, and we'll see how this goes, that I would go on my iPad. So I'm using good notes and I actually had created a digital download, um, which you can get on Etsy, um, with just some different layouts of things. And I also went through and I photographed or scanned the previous pages from the paper, just so I had them in one place. But for this year, I've got the calendar so now I've got three years worth of information on one calendar. So it will eventually be five years. Uh, I'm not really sure what I'll do with the following year. I might copy, I'll probably copy the last year and then add on. But, and I think in addition to the highs and low temperatures, I might also add high and low temperature in my greenhouse just for, to have that. So this is the, the part I like the best. I've got all the notes. I've got how many weeks until the last frost date. And then what I did is I highlighted when the low is under, no. Okay, so for the spring and the fall, it's if the high is under freezing, it's blue. And if the low is above freezing, it's yellow. So then I can kind of look at a glance and see, you know, a trend. Like, okay, well, clearly nothing, we, we don't want to plant anything yet, right? Because there's too many lows. But now we're starting to get into the highs are above freezing. Here, you know, it's still back and forth, back and forth. And eventually we're going to get to a point where all the highs are above freezing. So then I can easily see when I should start planting. And now, so this is the last two years. May 1st is our one week until last frost date. So I think May 8th is our last frost date in zone 4B. So we can see here that, well, the one year, I was quite a bit above that, but last year it was a week ahead. So I like that method because I can kind of look at it in a glance, I can add little sort of sticker graphics, things like that. Right now, it's not like the neatest handwriting, but I can easily update that when I feel like doing it. So that's kind of what I'm doing for my calendar. Um, I've got, and those are, that's a template that you can purchase. And then I also have I took pictures of these pages here, but they, they didn't do very good, so I might have to redo those. I also have my beds drawn out uh, where I can kind of sketch out what I want in each bed. Maybe I kind of do, I do a very vague square foot gardening method, but just kind of get an idea of how big and what I can fit in there. Um, and I can rearrange those as I see fit. There's the big bed. I don't, I think that might be to scale, but a little more just general ideas. And then those are the pumpkin. And that is my feeble attempt to keep track of my perennial um, 
pollinator garden, which is hard because everything is sort of willy-nilly in there. So it's, it's my best guess of what's in there. Plus, I don't have any of my bulbs. Those are all also spread out in there. But that is what I'm doing for garden planning. Last year, I kept track of what I wanted to plant inside. So those I wanted to plant inside, I I don't know what 130 is. That I don't think I planted 130 of them. So I frankly don't know what those numbers mean. Huh, that's a mystery. Anyway, um, and then how many, this is how many, the number next to it. So then for this year, the good thing about the iPad is you can split view. And so I can look at this year's list and I can make this the list of what I want to plant and how many plants I need. And I figure that out based on the drawing here. So I decide like, oh, I'm gonna start zucchinis, but I had noted I only want to do two. <laughs> Two is even going to be too many, I'm sure. I think I had three last year, and that was still way too many for me. Um, things that, yeah, tomatoes, you know, the spacing works out pretty good this way. I might do less than that, but that's how I keep track of what I want to plant and what I want to start versus what I'm going to put in the ground. Full screen. So that is how I am doing my garden journal this year. Um, I think I'm going to like it. Originally, I wanted to do paper because I wanted to be able to bring it outside, um, you know, grab grab the notebook, grab a pencil. If it gets dirty, it's fine, whatever. But like I said, I'm almost to the end of this one. And what I think I'm going to like is being able to rearrange. I can move pages. I can... Um, cut and paste information. You know, you can highlight things. I don't have my pencil. Um, anyway, you can circle that and move it to a different page if you want, stuff like that. If I was really creative, you know, I could make this look really pretty. So I don't know. We're going to go with this. We're going to see how it goes. Really, realistically, I didn't bring the notebook out to my garden that often. I did like during planting, especially with pumpkins, to kind of keep track of what I planted where. But other than that, mostly I would just, you know, remember what I wanted to write down and come inside and do it. So that is my garden journal for 2023. I have not planted anything yet. I did start clearing off my seed starting area and I did order some seeds. I'm going to do the part of the Master Gardener program. You could do the seed trials through the Arboretum. So I ordered some of those. So I'll have to, I think a couple of those have to be started inside. We'll see. They won't come until later this month, but there is plenty of time. If we look at the calendar, what are we on? February still? It is February 20, what, 8th? 10 weeks till last frost. So plenty of time. I don't get too excited about it because the sooner you plant the seedlings, the leggier and crazier they get. Either they take over the whole seed starting area or they're just too leggy. And frankly, it seems like you start a seed in the ground versus your seedling. They kind of even out in the end anyway, for the most part. So that is what I'm doing. But I hope you're having a decent winter. We just got dumped a bunch of snow, so thinking about spring is kind of a, a nice little break in the day.